Mr. Kurosama steps into the duties of Kurosensei for the classmate's physical training. I'd like to point out because the class is filled with kids, he's able to physically school the kids he's teaching, and to do so in a form and fashion that isn't as ridiculous as Koro does. Imagine for a moment if Assassination Classroom wasn't with some monster, but some highly capable super soldier. You might then have a much more comprehensive and immersive anime. We see in the first 20 seconds of the classmates sparring with Kurosama another of the flaws of Assassination Classroom. The kids are just kids. They're not superheroes, mutants, aliens, or remarkable in any way. Imagine a classroom filled with ragtag throwaway superheroes that had to build themselves up to save the world as their powers grew, and once again, you would have a really good formula. The kids are helpless and have zero means to improve anywhere near what they need to, and I'm sure someone will be able to say there's a clear metaphor for kids in the real world in school. If being taken to a mundane setting with a mundane characters and say for one uber being, and reminded of real life is your kick, well then Assassination Classroom should be the show for you. And just in bout when all hope is lost for progress, we meet a new classmate named Parma, fresh off suspension. We see with surprise and innovation that the impossible suddenly becomes probable. When you abandon rules and restrictions, when you rattle your opposition by any means necessary, you can give yourself a fighting chance. It's refreshing and beyond enjoyable to see someone so smug and rattled like this. If you were to say that I have a kinship with Karma, you wouldn't be wrong. We have a goading, taunting character who takes all the power away from Koru by pushing his buttons. Karma could have easily been a star in his own anime. Just seeing his backstory or his upbringing would be interesting. We see Karma relishing in his duties, even remarking to a previous teacher of his died before, and he's downright giddy to find out that Kuro is much more a teacher than a monster. So to him, it's more enjoyable that way. I must confess, as someone with a sizable college debt, it's insanely easy to like Karma. And between Kuro being a tentacle monster and this kind of fan service, I'm beyond pleased this isn't a hentai. If I were a braver soul, I'd look up Karma on Rule 34, and one would only imagine imagine what fans have done with this by now. Ultimately, what man cannot destroy destroys him. Koro, at least for the moment in this series, has a foil that can exploit what makes him good. He can twist and bend Koro's values. He can challenge him and do what most of all, all villains are supposed to do, lose. Three episodes in, an assassination classroom has at long last hit its healthy medium. Alternatively, we turn to Survival Game Club that introduces us to Saku, a girl who's always been hurting herself, and the Game Club advisor, and which is why she's been missing from the first two episodes. And we meet Pedo Bear. No, really, there are four to five underage girls here, and one of them is dressed up like the bear. I'm just saying what it looks like. Once again, Survival Game Club has just said fuck it and is using BB guns on hornet's nests. Whereas before the girls pretended to be shooting each other, and you'd see the action through the girl's imagination, one might assume that the girl shooting the hornet's nest with the school staff offering to pay for it is a game of all make-believe? I'm grasping at trying to make sense of this, bear with me. I'm going to skip through all this nonsense because this actually winds up going somewhere in the next half of this episode. With the second part being cut in two, with Momoko, our lead's protagonist, taking upon herself to take on an entire game club, which appears to be made of elementary class students, for not just challenging Mio, the game president, but calling Momoko a hag. My biggest concern was despite having a good time with Survival Game Club, I would have nothing to talk about as far as Momoko growing as a character. She's gone from being a complete novice to taking on an entire game club on her own, something episode one Momoko never would have even dreamed of doing. But enough of all that, the action is hot and heavy, with Momoko blowing away a little kid. Well, okay, literally closer to imagining it, but it's still hard to explain to you guys something so warped is amazingly so fun. And I can only assume that the cat gun is an homage to the postal cat silencer. We see what had to be a new twist to the old do-gooder overcoming the carny vendor. I've seen the Despicable Me variant of Gru blowing up the target with a laser, Bender from Futurama beating the vendor in the head, and now Mio knocking everything down and keeping the crap for herself. It sure takes a lot to be more loathsome than Bender from Futurama, so mad props to Survival King Club. They didn't just meet the standard, they blew it away. In closing, as much as it hurts me to admit, Assassination Classroom managed to get more out of its antagonist with less, using a delinquent child to challenge a godlike monster. Monster, versus spoiled girl and her minions getting foiled by a somewhat shaky, inexperienced lead. I'm thinking this might be a good place to wrap up this comparison and contrast series, as Assassination Classroom has at long last, has at least for me, hit its stride and can be its own standard bearer. I may come back to one or both of these, but I'll be looking to mix things up more so in the future with other titles. I hope you enjoyed this format and look forward to your thoughts down below.